Hi guys, it's so good to see you. You too. You look like you're all fired up. I am, man. This whole thing that you guys That's did the with best. us. Ah, um, so many wins. Um, okay, so Gibbs Goodies is um gonna be an apothecary of healthy treats. Mm. And I am partnering with Daphne, who is an herbologist. Whoa, that's so good. Yes, <laughs> apothecary. That makes so much sense. It's so yeah. good. Lean all the way into what makes it unique. Yeah. yeah. So I don't know if you can have Daphne come up too, but we've been talking yeah. sure. and um, yeah, we got together when we talked um, at the retreat, we were just talking about like somehow to collaborate and then she tried my balls and then we started talking about what she did. And so we are going to create some balls. And Daphne, do you want to talk about some of the things that you've thought of and come up with? Sure. So you would, when you were giving your pitch and it was like, what's your thing? And I thought, you know, it would be really amazing is to have apothecary balls because, you know, when I have clients, I really feel that it's bringing it all the way to the delivery. And I know I've been talking about my tea business and the membership and it was, it's so close and just it wasn't hitting and um, so it's, you know, in addition to having the tinctures and the teas to have these, you know, medicinal powders that add to balls, because for people who are, you know, are just not feeling well enough to make their own food or don't have the time to make their own food, or they just have a newborn baby and they just need to have easy food. Um, and, you know, people are asking me for certain formulas, like they want menopause balls, like, that, you know, like that is something or immune balls or just things that they give their kids too, that they can pack in the lunch. Um, so it just seems like such a great way to, it's amazing. Sure. It's incredible. I, and I then like I was like, then I did my visualization this morning and I was like, I see the apothecary I've been wanting to do all this time, but I just was looking, I was thinking too small about it. Oh my God. Um, so I sent some herbs up to a friend of mine has a restaurant in the Hudson Valley and they're going to just, they have like all the commercial grade stuff. So they're going to try to grade, you know, grind it up, see what kind of equipment, I would need and, um, and, you know, and yeah, so, and, and then I can figure out like formulations because obviously flavor is going to be an issue and formulating the, the balls. And, you know, this has to be really like food level medicine. So it's not going to be risky as far as like people on medications or, you know, there's so many herbs that to choose from, and this would be sort of more like the adaptogen herbs or the support herbs. So I'm just so excited. Um, and we're both so excited. But I guess what we why we also were just hoping that you could help us figure this out a little bit. Like we've got, you know, we're both still trying to build our businesses. You know, we're both trying to figure out what that means. Um, I know I have to do my Instagram because and that's like another question I have is like, where do you I've been working so hard on my website for my personal practice, but I I don't, so I'm, I haven't really been doing all of the social media stuff. And I'm like, maybe this is the push I need to do that. Like I've been collecting a million pictures, but like I haven't posted them or little right. videos of me in the woods or whatever. So maybe this is when I finally get on Instagram and actually do it. <laughs> yeah. And besides I've, all her yumminess, I've got pet friendly balls. <laughs> I just was sampling those this week and the other cool place I went, got into, I got into um, a, a place that I thought I was going to get into their bakery. It's a home for disability, folks with disabilities. I met with the dietitians, and they're like, this is perfect for our residents. Wow. So we're going to do sampling with their residents. And that's where I just see that apothecary and getting the healthy things and actually people understanding the benefits of what the balls are really about. That's and amazing. it could be like a line, like I was thinking, you know, just because now I'm actually doing it, you know, maybe we just start with a few different recipes and then I can share them. And, you know, it also could be something. So, you know, that's where like, um, yeah. So I think just sort of starting and just seeing how it goes. Um, but, you know, and then we have to get into like the logistics of like, what about the labeling and, um, you know, all that part, which that's why we're like, you know, if you guys have any thoughts on it or oh, you know, yeah, I have a ton of thoughts on it, which is <laughs> sell the balls. You got to yep. sell those balls now, right? All that stuff where you go from like 
Do you feel how much you just allowed in? You just allowed in, you allowed yourself to birth like this incredible, beautiful, it's designed. It's got a, it's got, it's got everything it needs. It, it's unique. It, it, it puts all this beauty together with like the ap apothecary and, and all the overtones of that, but then also like her delicious, like it's, it's just the most beautiful, beautiful light that you allowed in. Right. And now you're going to like, so how do we figure out the labeling and then this? And it's like, okay, so remember, let's go back. Just let's use Jenny's story as an example. Cause she was there with us. Right. And she was like, I sold it. Then I sold it. Then I sold it. Then I sold it. So she sold her way through the process. She was selling it over and over and over and over again. So before she figured out the label, before she figured out the FDA approved next step of what she's going to need in the process of pasteurizing this product, <laughs> she had sold it, sold it again. And what did Mark Cuban say? When the business started to go bust because COVID no longer could support them in stores, he said, tell people you're ready for retail now. And she's like, I'm not ready for retail. He's like, I don't care. You tell them you're ready now make the sale and then you're going to figure out how you're ready for retail and because of that they went from almost losing their business to 75 million dollars in sales in less than two years because they said we are ready now we are not we don't have it figured out but we're ready to sell it right now everything is about selling first it's always a pre-sale right you don't need much right even the story of um Little Kenner Toys, Little Kenner Toys, it's a great story, which is that when Star Wars was about to come out, all of a sudden, George Lucas was like, what if this movie is big? Like, what if it's a big deal? And what if we should have like toys and like products? And so he went to Mattel and he went to Hasbro and they were like, but you don't have the products. So we can't sell something that you don't even have a concept. You don't have a thing. There's no widget. There's nothing that's made. We'd have to first design them. Then we'll put them on the shelves. Then we'll test them. And he was like, no, you're wrong. I need this now. The movie's coming out. I need to be able to sell them. So what did they do? He was so brilliant. He went to Little Kenner Toys, which was the lowest on the totem pole. And he said to Little Kenner Toys, would you do this with me? And they're like, this is brilliant. We'll totally do this with you. And so for Christmas morning that year, the little boys and little girls waking up on Christmas, all they had under the Christmas tree that was wrapped was a little cardboard cutout that said, you just got, it was a pre-sale basically. And the parents bought all they could have was like a little cardboard cutout. It was like, you just got a Star Wars uh, little toy, like a little, like, you know, what are they called? Those little- Like a figurine. Those? Figurine, exactly. Thank you for the word. Star Wars figurine coming soon. Kids went ape shit for it. They were freaking out. So more parents bought and more parents bought and more parents bought all for this tiny little piece of cardboard that said figurine, Star Wars figurine coming soon. What happened? Kenner Toys dominated. They made millions of dollars. They had never made a sale like that. They then took that money and they made figurines lunch boxes, pajamas, you name it. It became the biggest, most profitable license of a toy in history of toys. And it was a pre-sale. That's the shit right there. Okay. So stop you because what you're doing is this is a, this is, I want you all to feel into what I'm about to say. This is a paradigm change. This is an actual paradigm change. You get really excited and then you go, but wait, 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 I need your help. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. You have to help me now figure this out. And it's like, yeah, you've got to sell what you have right now. That's next. And what happens is we're so uncomfortable. We don't even realize that we're uncomfortable, but we're so uncomfortable with the idea of selling so that we go to like, oh, it'd be better if I just worked on figuring out. You're not ready to figure out the next step. You have enough right now. So then you go, but no, I don't. No, I don't have enough right now because I need all of this. It's like, no, you need conversation after conversation after conversation. The way that the way that we have seen, like Kendra Scott was walking into stores being like, here's a pair of earrings. Like, what do you think? And they're like, yeah, cool. I'll buy whatever. Jenny was walking in with a saran wrapped piece of vegan corned beef. There was no fanfare. She didn't have it. 
She went from Delhi to Delhi to Delhi. And then she was like, where else are there mouths to feed? Let me call Dodger Stadium. How smart was that? Let me call yep. the commissary at the Fox studio. Let me call Disney commissary. And she went from studio to studio. Which was, where are their mouths to feed? Where the, With a saran wrap, a saran wrap piece of corned beef. It was good. It worked. It's like, we'll take a hundred of those. Well, then, and then she figured it out. She got, shit, I've got all these sales. My friend, Emily McDowell went with her friend to a, what are they called? It's like a trade, a trade show is what it's called. And she had one greeting card. And her friend was like, it's so good. It's so good. Just put it, just put it in my stand. And she's like, I don't have a stand. Great. I'll put it on your table. So she puts it on the table and she tells the story on the podcast. And this woman comes along and says, we'll order 30,000 of those. And it was from Urban Outfitters. They wanted 30,000 of this one greeting card. And Emily was like, right on top of that, Rose. And then she was like, I don't know the first thing about making a greeting card. And then it was hysterical because she lived in this tiny little apartment in downtown LA and she ordered all the stuff to her house and she didn't realize how much energy it takes to put together the card inside the envelope with the sticker. Like, and so what happened is the boxes arrived 30,000. There was no room. She couldn't get to the bathroom. She lived in a studio apartment. She was like, this is hilarious that I thought that I could just, just me and my friend, we'll just put these together. And so from there, right, she figured out the next thing, which is like, I need a storage facility, but I have the money in hand. I can, the nobody, no one, not Ralph Lauren, not Jenny, nobody, not Kendra Scott. Nobody was like, oh, so here's what I did. No, what the next thing is, you sell the shit out of this. That's your next step. So then you go, well, where are we going to sell it? So that's the question to have. So where are you guys thinking about selling and who are you talking to and start making those phone calls, right? Every time I would make a phone call to Ogilvy, that was my pre-sale. Then I would go write the song. Then I would go send the song. I didn't have albums of songs. That would be so stupid for me to pay a producer and spend $20,000 on an album, $30,000 on an album just to write songs. I don't even know if they want them. This is the way we all, I was like, no, first I need to no, let's sell these apothecary balls because you sell with a story. You sell on a golf course. You sell in a conversation. You sell through conversation. You have everything you need right now. What you just said was a symphony. It was magic. Everybody here was like, I'm in. I want them. Let's go. So you need a sample of a ball per thing that you just talked about. If it's for dogs, if it's for the people who want to take home different, you just have a little sampling. It's like, here's the apothecary. This one makes you feel calm. That has magnesium in it. You take this one before bed. This one gives you all your, you know, you don't have to drink one of these. You have that, whatever your thing is and let's go. So where are you selling it? That's my question. Who are you selling it to? Who are we calling? Let's get some money made. I've actually been um, uh, in stadiums here and concert venues. Um, that's, I've got some hotels that I've been talking to. Um, I also need to like start talking to, um, uh, some, uh, like natural health, um, stores, but also just even the bakeries because you've got the apothecary of course, but you have just the balls itself. And then, um, like Daphne, she sells, she's got, um, she works with her clients and doing the balls. And so we sell them to her people. And so we get into nutritionists, we get into functional medicine doctors. Mm -hmm. um, and, but we really, it's, um, like I'm just trying to continue to, I have a lot of bulk people in the food industry, like hotels and all of that. Um, those are my past connections, but I know that there, there's just more out there. So yeah. like McCormick place, I just talked to and in Chicago. Um, so, cause all of the excitement is in there because in those conversations, when someone's like, great. And on your first conversation is, can we set up a time for you to sample these? That's it. Right. And remember what we talked about at the retreat. Think about that difference. You know, we're generalizing, but it's a pretty strong point. Men don't do this. They just walk in and go, do you like it or not? Do you want it or not? Right. Let's move on. Let's move out of the codependency. This is business. This is not about you carrying their decision. This is not about you holding everything that people feel and think and have opinions about. This is just business. It's like, here, would you like to have a taste of this? Yes or no? Are you in or you're not? 
Deal or no deal? No, you're not. Great. Thank you so much. Yes, you are. Great. When can I be there? Awesome. Now here's the stuff. Do you like it or not? Yes or no? Here's what it costs. Great. Let's do a deal. That's it. It's clean. You're, you're, you're not hurt by it. This isn't personal. You're not affected. You're unattached. This is just, let's go wheels up. You got the whole world at your feet, right? Let's just see who's in and who's not. That's your next step. That's it. And then you're going to know, because you might have this big eye-opening realization after if you do 20 calls a day, which is what I used to do, by the way, you know how easy it was for me to make 20 calls a day? Because if you guys remember my little story about working in commercial real estate, we had a counter on my phone. We actually had an old school phone and there was a counter on it. And I had to make 400 cold calls by the end of a week. Okay. This is for commercial real estate. So my job was to call real estate agents to see if real estate agents investors wanted to invest because it was a commercial property. It's not really like a, hi, would you like to sell your home? It was just a little different points the same, right? I had to make 400 fucking calls a week. Do you know how good that was for me? It was like, hey, hello, here we go again. You know, like let's get this done. And so 400 calls a week, when I started my own business, I was like, I can make 20 calls a day and like, see how that goes. And it was like 20 calls a day, like a hundred calls a week. I was soaring. I was like, this is insane. I'm like, I'm dominating this industry because I am not afraid to be uncomfortable and to call people. It was like all people, 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 people. So after you spend a few weeks making these calls, you will have a discovery. You'll be like, oh, you know what? We're actually crushing it in the, in the pet industry. So it's all pet now. It's all pet all day long, right? But you don't have any data right now because you don't have any customers. So most people make a mistake and they're like, I'm going to spend the next year designing a site. I'm going to design a social media plan. I'm going to hire somebody to build out a funnel. I'm going to make freebies. I'm going to make social media content. It's like Jenny didn't have an Instagram account until after she went on Shark Tank, right? So let's not worry about that right now. Let's just get some data. Let's get some sales. Let's talk to human beings. A lot of them, a lot of buyers, a lot of decision makers. Let's see what they want and let's just make money. Think of it this way. There are people right now sitting at a desk whose job it is to look for you, whose job it is to be a buyer and to buy things. So they have the checkbook ready. When I used to call and talk to people about writing music for TV shows or films, it was like music supervisors are given a budget. They're sitting there doing this job all day long. They're looking through their iTunes, listening to songs, talking to people, seeing who's going to write the song for So I'm not doing something duplicitous. I'm not doing something wrong. They're looking for someone like me they, to fill this need, to solve this problem. And I'm raising my hand to solve the problem. So what I found after doing many, many of those calls is that people actually wanted me to write this kind of like happy, cheerful music. And I thought, well, you know, I'm an artist. Like I sing a lot of songs that are about heartbreak and all of this stuff, but it really served me well to write the songs with the hand claps and the ukuleles. I was at the right place at the right time. I could do that in a really genuine way because you guys have gotten to know me. I really do have a pretty positive outlook on life. And so they were like, this is it. Just do that. You become known for this. You become, they used to call me happy Keller right? Like you just write genuinely happy songs. And so what did I do? McDonald's, McDonald's again, Walmart, Target, Coca-Cola. And I was like, I'm happy to be known for that. You know, if that's going to pay my mortgage, it was fun. It's a blast to be called. And they, can you write the Christmas song for McDonald's? Like, yeah, I can do that. Right. So that's what I did. And my songwriter friends were like, <laughs> It's not really a vibe because I mean, happy songs, like those are not the songs that people, and I, I, I felt that, you know, as an artist, it was like, oh, you know, that sucks that I'm not taken seriously because I'm not Fiona Apple, you know, but it was okay because I was having a blast and I bought a house. I was like, yeah, you guys can go, you know, whatever. <laughs> I'm, I'm fine. I'm enjoying my life. Right. I only knew that though, because I talked to a lot of people. So if I would have wasted my time trying to be something that I'm not and trying to be as cool and artsy as Regina Spector, first of all, I'm not. And second of all, they weren't buying that. that. She might get a song on Grey's Anatomy, but she wasn't getting ads. And I was getting ad after ad and I was having a blast and it was I was happy with it, right? Because I wasn't trying to tour. I was trying to just be a mom and all that stuff. So what's, what's that plan? What does that look like? And what's really in the way of that if there's no plan? Because we need to get those calls made and we need to make those appointments happen. 
So that's really what needs to happen between the two of you. It's one thing to like talk about it and say, we could call these people, but like, it actually just has to get done. And when you're clean about it and it's not personal and it's not codependent and there's no shame, it's just business. It's fun. It's exciting. You're like, Ooh, I can't wait to call. I want to see what's going to happen. I want to see what these people are going to say. Already. I mean, I'm, I, I've got the, I'm knocking on the doors with what I've got. I'm waiting, you know, we're co- just talking about this collaboration. She's over there. So I'm pushing what's out there, what I've got currently and knocking is on. And as you guys have doors. that worked out between you that you're both making calls or it's just Diane making calls. How are you going to do it? I think we both do calls because okay. we're both, we're on two different you know, sections of the country. And also, you know, like we have, because of our different professions, you know, you've got, she has all the food contact and, you know, really can do all that work, which is, you know, and I can, I've got the herbal world. Um, I mean, there's even just like the local grocery stores and the health food stores. And I mean, holiday fairs would be great, just sort of, you know, but that's not, um, but yeah, no, I think, I, and then just calling the bigger people too. Like I, I, I can commit to doing 20 calls a day. I think that's, I think that's going to sort know of, how that'll change your life. Yeah. Honest to God. You, Cause I really am so excited about these. I mean, even as someone who's been in the herbal world for, you know, decades, it's like, this is not there. Like, this is something that is going to be such a great product to have out there. I mean, that's, I'm so excited just to bring it to the world. Yep. Okay. So your 20 calls are so easy right now because your call is, Hey, we're so excited. Remember enthusiasm is the most infectious state of being. So you just bring your enthusiasm. Hey, can I speak to so-and-so? Oh, he's not there. Oh, is Jonathan there? Like literally you do a tiny little slew thing. Okay. So I used to just Google the businesses and I'd be like Ogilvy broadcast producer. And then I would just call for the guy. Is Christopher Smith there? He's not, is anyone else there in the broadcast department? I'm a music vendor. I don't know. I'd make stuff up. I mean, I am a music vendor. That's what I did. I wrote music, but like, you just kind of play with it a little bit and you see what gets you to the person, but you can see, you know, like who's the person in charge, talk to that person, talk to the manager of Dean and DeLuca, talk to the owner of whatever store, just talk to people, reach out and call. And you got this enthusiasm. Like we're, I'm so excited. We have these things they are called apothecary balls. They're so cool. They kind of combined it. I want to know if this is something you'd be interested in just tasting. Where are you right now? Is it freezing? What are you doing for the holidays? What did you do for the holidays? So fun. So great. I'm excited. Can I ship these to you? Can I come over? Is it local? Is it far distance? You just get some samples out there and you're going to start checking it off. Okay. Not interested. Interested. If you get three out of 20 a day, that say, sure. That's incredible. That's 15 samples you're sending a week out of 15 people a week. Do you know how many buyers you're going to wind up getting? You know how many things that you're going to wind up selling? And they're going to say, we like these. We'd like to try them like this. Great. Right. I used to think to myself, gosh, as uncomfortable as this is when I was calling ad agencies and everybody else, I was like, on the other side of this could be six figures, which at the time was a lot of money. I was like, what if I could make six figures? What if I could do this? I could just, if I could sell three songs, if I could license three songs a year, I would be great. Cause every song was like 75 grand. I was like, this would be amazing. And so I did. And on the other side of this, I speak to my peers now and they're like, oh, I don't want to launch. I'm like, why? What do you have against it? Just speak from top of the mountain, have fun, be non-attached. It's a blast. You should be launching all the time, rinsing and repeating. Your message gets clearer. People start to know who you are, what you're for, what you stand for, what you do, what problem you solve. It's a blast, right? This is all it is. This is all it is. So if you can get excited, they're going to get excited. There are products that are way less cool that they're buying. There are products that taste less good, that do less by, by people who, and you can say we're women owned and led, you know, or women owned. And this is what we're here for. And we're having the best time with it. We'd love to get a sample to you. Great. Send me a sample. And then you follow up. Is John there? Hey, John, just following up. I know you have probably a thousand things on your plate. Did you get a chance to try that? What do you think? Is this something that you guys would like? Is this something that works for you? Well, how could this work for you? What is your initiative for this quarter? What's your brand um, sort of, you know, overarching goal right now? How can we be a part of that? How can we partner together? How can we collaborate? They're like, huh. So it's not a yes or no question. It's like, how can we collaborate? Is this something that works for you? What's your brand's initiative for this quarter? Oh, well, 
actually we're doing this. Oh, well, you know what? We can do it in that wrapping. Oh, we could do a pumpkin spice version of this, you know, call freaking Starbucks, see what they say. Maybe they're going to showcase them. And then you might have people who want them exclusively. Now you have an issue. It's like, is that good or that bad? Well, we could do an exclusive Starbucks version or a pumpkin spice version that could be exclusive to you guys. But then we could have other things that we do other places. I had that with my music. They'd be like, we want this song exclusively. And I'd have to kind of like judge, like, hmm, is that a good thing? I have, you have to judge it, you know, as you're going along, it's all in the conversations, right? Cause how fun would it be if you had orders right now for $120,000 worth of balls? Well, then there's nothing to figure out. Cause you know what the next step is. It's like, well, we have these orders. Well, the next thing we need is this. We need to find a factory located here or someone need to co-pack these. And we now need to find the packaging, but it's really going to be for these kinds. So we need to get this packaging made. We're going to call a designer and we have the $20,000 to give her to design all the packaging. Like that's how it works. It's really not hard. It's that it's scary. That's the problem. And because we don't want to admit that we're scared, we just go into, I just don't know what to do. I guess I just have to figure this out and I can't figure it out. And meanwhile, men... They're not doing this. <laughs> They're just making calls, right? They're just making calls. Howard Schultz used to work for FedEx. He did cold calls. He worked for FedEx. He would walk in and, and have cold calls with people and be like, oh, do you want to be like a client? You know, do you want to sign on? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? Like, you guys got this. Do you have any other thoughts or questions? Are you excited? I am so thrilled. I am just dancing all day long. <laughs> I cannot even believe this. I, when... We talked about it. I thought, oh my gosh, here it is. I've seen this like storefront that I was, of course, putting on hold. You just need to sell the balls, you know, like you say. But the storefront as well, you come in and you can get the balls and then you can go, hey, this is how I'm feeling. And you bring your dog in and you get the dog treat. You get the kids happy. You get mom happy. You get everything for the whole family. Yep. I mean, and then you got the aphrodisiac part of it. You've got, <laughs> there's going to be CBD balls, doobie balls. The balls are rolling. That's so I've smart. Got so many balls in the air. It's yeah. fantastic. It's I, awesome. Like, it's awesome. And it's so smart. It's such a great business. I would be on the phone with goop. I would be calling the buyer a goop because you're two women doing something. I mean, there's just so many. And then of course you can sponsor events. You know, you can sponsor events where women are hanging out. You can call Jacqueline Johnson. We want to sponsor an event. We want to put little these, these in everybody's bags. Cause there's all these influencers there. Colleen, do you want to add anything to this really fun conversation? Oh, just that I'm so excited for you both. And that enthusiasm alone, right? It really is the pure magic. And so just echoing what Kathy said is just watch not to get pulled back in to the slower moving logistics that really it, it's the certainty we want. Well, but then we won't look professional if we don't have this ready or package to send to them. And then that will screw us over. And this, you know what I mean? That's how the brain works. And Jenny said it herself. It was like cellophane, whatever, saran wraps, like I want to call it fake meat, but whatever we want to call it, unreal, <laughs> unreal meat that she would take in there. It didn't have like fancy, you know, now she does. Now she's got a $75 million company. She can do that, but she didn't get there by having that. She got there by just having the courage to let it be messy, right? So it's not going to screw you over. It's actually what's going to help you. You know, I want to give you another example of this because I want you guys to really hear this because it's something that we, we do, we, we panic about it. When I was creating this pilot with the Jim Henson company, I remember Lisa Henson, we were sitting in this meeting and we were working on this pilot and we had all the renderings of these puppets and we had this incredible script and we had music that I had written. Okay. And so I thought we're going to shoot this pilot. We're going to make all these puppets. We're going to turn the soundstage into the peaceful place, which was the name of the show, the peaceful place. So it would be like these beautiful trees and this little creek and they would do it really cute with these little puppets and around the brook and she's like oh we're not doing that and I was like oh why are we not doing that and she was like oh because see we're gonna go to Disney Nickelodeon and PBS I'm like right so wouldn't we want to make the most professional polished pilot and she's like no we wouldn't want to do that because we want them to buy it right and I was like, yeah. And she's like, right. So what we want to do is we want to just show them something that's like a messy little taste. And I'm like, hmm? I don't get that. And she's like, yeah. Cause if we make 
something amazing. We, we put energy into it. We get puppets, we, we could, but it's just a pilot, right? So we're not going to put millions into it, but let's say we put like 50 grand in and we get a few puppets. Is it going to be our best? Do you think it's going to be the most amazing thing we could ever make? I was like, oh, she's like, no, it won't be. And then what we're going to do is we're going to send them something that looks as though this is our best. And it's not, it's not even close to our best. So instead we're going to make it look very much like here is a messy little sizzle. That's mm -hmm. all it is. It's a sizzle. That's all you get. And so what we shot was me in front of a green screen and the green screen was very green screen looking. Like it looked like a green screen with different images and I sang, and then they showed these little renderings, like an animatic of these little puppets and they put it together. There was a little video they could watch. And then there was a little folder with some pages of scribbles and doodles. And we walked in and Lisa was like, here's the peaceful place. And she said, and that's how we sold Sesame Street and Fraggle Rock and everything else. Because you don't do that. Because when you're actually cool, when you're really legit, you wouldn't dare be like, we got all the packaging. Look, look how great it is. And it's like, that doesn't hold a candle to everything on my shelf. How dare you think that you're going to lower your value, right? And be like, but we invested, look at our website. It's like your website is not, you're going to run circles around that website. Once you've got money in the bank, once you're actually a thing. So most deals that are done, whether it's this giant kind of a deal or if it's small, same thing with my book, right? What happened? We were moving from Macmillan to Simon and Schuster. And I said to my agent. Okay. What are we going to do? He's like, you're going to send them a sample, like an outline. You're going to send them like three pages written. You're not going to send them a book because you send them a book. You're like, this is me. This is my best work. Do you love it? Like, no, I don't love it. That's your whole book. Not interested. Get it. But here's a sample, which is a little bit of what I can do. Obviously it's going to be way more elaborate than this. Oh, well, I'm interested. I want to buy that. So when people walk in, when Ralph Lauren walked into Bloomingdale's, he walked in with two neckties and he was like, I have a whole bunch of things for you, but what do you think of this? When Bobby Brown walked into Bergdorf, she came in with eight lipstick colors, nothing else. She's like, I've got, I've got blush. I've got this. I just wanted to see the lipstick. What do you think of that? She had nothing else. She had eight lipstick colors. They were like, we'll, we'll start with this. Let's do eight lipsticks. We'll do this. Da, da, da. Great. Got it done. Stop it. You're going the wrong way. Don't figure it out. You're not ready to figure it out. You don't have the budget. You don't have the designer. You don't have, because you're not supposed to, right? You're supposed to go from here to jump to this lily pad, jump to this lily pad. And now you're like, now I'm going to show you what's up, right? But it's all samples. Like if you go and you go into downtown LA to the fashion mart and you look at what people are buying, whether it's they're buying from mother jeans and mother denim, or it's like a sample right? It's not like, here's our whole line with all of our bells and whistles. Hell no, they're not that stupid, right? So you want to do the same thing and you don't want to have it all figured out right now because you're not even close to what it's going to be. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. It makes okay. a lot of sense. Flip and I think you're, yeah. So when I used to send music to people, I would send and be like, this is a work tape. This is a work tape. It's just a work tape, right? It's a work tape. It's 30 seconds. It's just the verse and just the first chorus. And then I get the feedback. Great. I'm glad that was a work tape because we don't like the layered harmonies there and we need it faster. I'm like, great. See, it wasn't my song. Oh my God, I'm not, that's not my song. Now I'll send you my song, right? Now here's the song. Now here's the radio edit because I know you want to buy it. And we had three conversations and I just got all your notes and now you can have the song. So songwriters would be like, I made a whole record and I sent it out. I'm like, you sent out a whole record. You look like an idiot. Cause now not only did you send one finished song, you sent them 10 finished songs and they got a first impression and said, this is called mediocre. I'm not interested. Right? So you don't send 10 songs and you don't send a full song either because they go, this is mediocre, but you just showed me this is the best you can do. Not interested. But if you send something messy, it's a work tape. It's a process. We're in it. We're collaborating. We're getting in it. It's not even close to what I'm going to do at the end of this, right? Same thing, Mickey Mouse, right? Emma and I just um, did a podcast. We interviewed this guy, Jeff Malberg, who just created this movie for Disney that came out last week about Mickey Mouse. And if you look at Walt and the story that's like legendary of how he like, you know, had to raise all this money and he just sold this little sketch of this little guy. And he was like, this little guy, this little guy is going to be it. 
this little guy, you know, and this big, big ball of enthusiasm and this little sketch, this little doodle, it built, you know, an empire, right? Built an empire. That's how he built Disneyland. They don't, they don't, they, they need to see your enthusiasm. They need to see your vision and they need a taste. They just need a taste and then you're going to sell it. So there is nothing to figure out except for having that conversation. And it's a work of art. So you want to have those conversations and you want 20 a day because you're going to anticipate you're not going to have your most smooth conversations the first 11 times. You're going to get nervous. You're going to, you're going to be like, oh, what am I actually saying? Oh, why didn't I say that? I wanted to say it this way. What? But by call number 46, you're going to be like in the pocket. You got that, right? Tell the story. What does Seth Godin say to me? He goes, you got to tell mediocre stories so much that you wind up telling brilliant stories. You got to keep telling that story. Tell it over and over and over and over and over again. This is what it takes, you guys. But on the other side of this, it's, it's freedom. It's an empire. The money's already out there. You just got to be willing to go out there and receive it in this way when you're starting a business, right? And then there's a million other divinely guided ways it's going to come to you. But this is one of the really cool ways because you can, you can exchange it for this courage, enthusiasm, and vision. That's it. There's nothing else to figure out.